Hey everybody, welcome back to our Nuxt full stack web development series. And in the last video, I believe we looked into creating our first API route, which involved us kind of simulating a database. Now we're actually gonna delve into something a bit more complex where we actually have our own database to work with entirely. And to do this, we're gonna be using a technology called Drizzle ORM. And if you guys don't know what an ORM is, it's an object relation mapper, which is basically an abstraction on top of something like an SQLite driver. And a lot of the times an ORM will manage your objects or your models for you, migrations, all of that good stuff. So that's where Drizzle comes into play and we are going to be getting it installed in today's video. So we can migrate our data onto the database instead of having it in memory like this. For the sake of this tutorial, we are going to be installing Drizzle for SQLite. However, you can use whichever database provider you would like, whether that be Postgres, MySQL, anything you want. But again, for the sake of this video, we're gonna be using SQLite just because we don't need an external service to do that. So we are going to be using Drizzle ORM with the Better SQLite 3 driver. What the driver does is just allow us to establish a connection with our SQLite database. So let's get started. Make sure your web server is off and you wanna go into the terminal and we're gonna install some packages. The first two packages we're gonna be installing are Drizzle ORM and Better SQLite 3. Now press enter and let it install. Okay, so we've installed those packages and now we're gonna be installing what are called dev dependencies. And we do this with uh, npm i and then dash d. Now, this is not going to be built onto the server. These are more like tools that we're gonna use. So we have drizzle kit and we have at types better SQLite 3. So let's install these as well. Okay, and once those are installed, we're gonna need to do a little bit of setup, obviously, to get things working. Also, don't be like me. I just realized I did this. I installed the node modules outside of our Nuxt app, so I'm gonna have to redo all of this. Make sure you see into your, into your Nuxt directory. Okay, now that I've properly installed everything, we're going to be making a file. And this file is going to be in the server folder, but we're gonna be making another folder inside of server called utils. Now inside of here, we're gonna be putting our drizzle ORM connection, along with other utilities that we're gonna use on the server. But for right now, it's just the drizzle stuff. So let's create a new file and let's just call it drizzle.ts. And so within this file, we're going to establish a drizzle connection. So we can do the following, const db equals drizzle, and we're gonna do process.env.database URL. Now you'll notice that this is not found. Let's just go to quick fix and import it from drizzle ORM better SQLite 3, as you can see. Now also you'll notice that this is not assignable. What we need to do is put a exclamation mark to say that this is always going to be present. Now this isn't present. This is an environment variable and there's multiple ways of setting this up. However, the way that I like to do it is by creating a new file in the root of our Nuxt app and just call it .env. And inside of here, we need to make a environment variable. This will be database URL, so ensure it matches whatever you put here. Okay, and we also need to specify a file. So we are just gonna say file, and then we're gonna say db.sqlite. Now let's create a new file within our root again and call it db.sqlite. This will be our database. Okay, and we're getting pretty close to actually being able to use our database, but first let's create another folder inside of our server folder called simply db. And in here, we're gonna create a new file and we're just gonna call it schema.ts. This file is where all of our tables are going to be initialized. And we can start off by doing export const, and we're gonna say fruits table because that's what we wanna store. So fruits table equals, and then we say SQLite table. If it gives you the option to import it like so, do that, and then we're gonna call it as a function, so we use parentheses, and within this string, we can put our table name. So we'll just call this fruits. Then we need to pass some options into our function. So we do that by using curly braces and initializing a new object. And this is going to be the schema for the table. So we can do id int dot primary key. And inside of here, we can say auto increment true. And you'll notice that it's complaining here. This is just because we need to import 
So import it from SQLite core. We're also going to have a name field and this is simply going to be the name of the fruit. We're gonna say text and we also want it to be not null. So let's import this as well. And now we have a very, very simple table, but it's not set up just yet because we need to do one last thing. In the root of our Nuxt app, let's make another file called drizzle.config.ts. And inside of here, this is where we're going to be setting up the configuration for Drizzle. We can do this by writing export default, find config. We're gonna have an output directory. Now this is where Drizzle is going to output all of its own files that it works with. We have a schema, and this is where we need to point it towards our server db schema.ts. And then we also need to give it a dialect and our dialect is going to be SQLite. And then finally, we need DB credentials, which is an object of itself. And we say URL process.env DB database URL, like so. Put the exclamation mark after to ensure it exists. Okay, now that we've done all of that good stuff, let's do an NPX Rizzle kit generate. And if you get this error that says define config is not defined, all we need to do is add an import to our drizzle config for define config. And we need to say that it comes from drizzle kit. Let's give this another shot. And I spelt dialect wrong. There we go. Now we have a drizzle folder and this creates our migrations. So in here we have a migration for creating our table, which is fruits. Very, very cool. Now we also need to run another command, npx drizzle kit, and we can say migrate. And this will run our migrations onto our database. So if we show this in our file explorer, I have SQLite browser, which I highly recommend for viewing SQLite files. We can open it up. And inside of here, you'll notice we have a few tables, but one in particular that we're interested in is our fruits table. So what we're going to do is actually copy all of our fruits from here, that includes apple, pear, grapes, and cherries, and add it to our database. We can do this by clicking this little button here and adding them all individually. Once you've added all of your data, you're gonna to need to go up here and press write changes so that the database is no longer locked. As of right now, we actually don't have any way to utilize our database just yet, but this can be resolved very easily by creating a new function inside of our drizzle.ts, and we're gonna call it use drizzle and make sure that we are exporting it. Here, we're just gonna return our DB. As well as this, we're going to pass in our schema as an option to our drizzle here. And to do this, we need to import all as schema from, and then we're going to point it towards our DB slash schema. This allows Drizzle to understand the schemas. One more thing that we can do down here, we can say export type and fruit, and we're going to do equals type of schema dot fruits table dot infer select. Now this gives us a type called fruit that we can work with and it contains our fruit model. This can be used anywhere in the application on the server side. Very cool. Now let's get our API endpoint hello.ts connected to our database so we're no longer using this internal memory. We can do this super easily by just saying const fruits equals and we write use drizzle, which is our utility that we created, dot select dot from fruits table, and let's import it like so. A way that I like to do chained functions is by separating it onto new lines. So that's how we're gonna be doing it. And then we do all, and this will just give us literally every fruit from our database. We can now pass this in here, return fruits, and let's just delete our database here. You'll see in our index, we have some errors, and that's because the use fetch actually provides the exact response that we're gonna be getting from our endpoint. So instead of database, we can just change this to fruits. The issue is that we don't even need this file at all. All we need to do is this. So let's run this again and let's see if our problem has been resolved or not. And as you can see, it has been. So do not put a file in, far in front, just make it a relative path to your database. And as you can see, we actually have our objects being listed. Although now that they're being output from the database, they have an ID attached. So let's change that quickly. All we need to do is go to our index and instead of doing fruit, we're gonna do fruit.name. One thing we can do, something that's actually recommended when you're iterating through lists is giving it a key. So we can do fruit.id as our key because this is a unique identifier for each fruit. And as you can see now, it has updated and shows like so. If we were to open up our database, go into fruits, 
and add a new record. We can call it pineapples, apply, write the changes, close out of our database. If we refresh the page, you'll see now we also have pineapples there. I hope you guys enjoyed. That was how we connect a database to our Nuxt app. Thanks for watching and have a good one.